Welcome to the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. This podcast is about all things outdoor photography, including landscapes, wildlife, macro, and more. The show features two talented photographers, Henry Doyle and Ryan Taylor, who bring their different experiences in photography to the podcast. The show is released weekly every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. In today's episode, Henry and Ryan talk about everything related to portfolios and sharing your work. They go over how to curate your photos for a presentation or client, the many variables such as composition, color, subject, and display options, and how to promote a body of work to get your photography seen. Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 49 of the podcast. Um, unfortunately, the beginning part of this episode didn't record. Um, so basically, what we were talking about is portfolios. Uh, that's what this entire episode is about. Um, so we were just kind of explaining what portfolios were, um, and now we're going to go into the rest of the conversation. I actually haven't done a lot of, besides like Instagram, uh, the only other platform I've really kind of established a portfolio uh, would be PicFair. And that reminds me, I, I really need to update that, but uh, that's uh, I sell prints through there. Um, and it's also, it's an easier way of displaying my images. Uh, what does annoy me about that place, though, is there's no customization. So I can't like order images. They're all just in order of when I uploaded them. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I have to be very strategic about that. I can't really do collections or anything. Uh, but I'll, I'll definitely be branching into a website soon. Uh, it's just expensive and I don't have time to make a website at the moment. But yeah, at some point I will definitely get into that and really develop it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. And it, honestly, I would say that's a good like launching pad into the world of like portfolio sites or even a fully like flush out website, like like websites like PicFair or uh, Flickr, 500 Pixels. Um, even you can, I would consider Instagram to be a portfolio website in a mm -hmm. sense. Um, I mean, now it's not a photo sharing app, but like you know, at least the way we both use it, you know, this it's like a portfolio in a such way. Um, or even my website, which is you know, it has its own. Uh, hosted uh, like web domain but like that I've purchased but it's also you know at the end of the day Smug Mug is like a portfolio site uh, first and foremost um, so I mean like those are good ways to really get your work out there mm -hmm. um, and have it digitally displayed and everything and then I know it's a bummer I didn't know that about PicFair how it doesn't actually arrange the photos though because um, I know Smug Mug's like fully featured and um, I think other ones like Flickr are the same way as PicFair if I recall mm -hmm. I don't think there's much like customization unless if you like uh i guess sort them into like albums i'm guessing mm -hmm. but like you know smugma you can do whatever the heck you want with it like the most recent taken the oldest the most recent modified or most of mine are just positioned manually of course you know how i want it but um yeah those are good ways to get really started i'd say with you know just arranging your your entire body of work really and just seeing how it all works mm -hmm. yeah and with pick fair too i mean it is a kind of a, a selling site first like it's it's not really meant to be a portfolio site um, you know people sell other types of art on there too and just kind of anything that's kind of in that picture printable form is kind of sold on there um, but yeah places like smug mug and uh you know Flickr's better definitely but then like you know smug mug squarespace all those website places you can really just go in uh that, your website's a great example of that you know with all your categories and all that so yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely be getting into that soon. I, I've been saying this for almost a year now and I need to make a website, but uh, it's just like I haven't felt the need to make it. Um, but now that I'm doing more and more like online stuff, you know, I, I get people asking for my website. So, yeah. I think, I think it's invaluable. I mean, mm -hmm. like it goes without saying in 2021 that like, you know, having an online presence, especially mm -hmm. if you want to like promote yourself, it's like I would say it's pretty much essential almost. Um, it's hard to get by, especially with like this very modern technologies and, you know, the like, photography itself is very nowadays, very social and modern I mean, in a lot of ways. So like, you know, I, I feel like it is essential to use, you know, the tools that we have and, you know, just make something. It doesn't have to be so like fleshed out and crazy. Like, and I don't even think it should be that way. Really, in my opinion is like, just make a really bare bones website, like have like just the basic, you know, functions and essential tools um, some SEO, maybe with some keywords, uh, for the whole site or each, you know, individual photo with some tags and then, uh, just make like them on rotating slideshows or I don't know, whatever, you know, sort, sort them all in the albums, like, 
like it doesn't have to be something super fancy especially at first but you know i feel like really nailing down like the core foundation of that and having a url that's yours mm-hmm. and that you own like i feel like all that you know yeah. taking ownership of that is like really important too especially with all this craziness with like facebook and like you know facebook just decides to change their name and i'm you know it's just you know all this stuff that keeps happening you know it's probably good to have a a site that's localized to you and not owned by some other company. Right. And then like, yeah. even, um, I honestly, I could even, I would recommend going a step above, like, like even what I do. Cause like smug Bug is great and all, um, but it is hosted on their servers and I, mm-hmm. I totally trust them. Like I, I have no reason not to, they've been great so far, uh, about the four years I've used them now. Um, but I would, you know, I'd even say go a step ahead and get your own. If you know, like the technological know-how, and uh, make your own self-hosted uh, like WordPress server if you want to be like very secure because that way you really do control the web space and the things that, you know the, your entire website and the uh, the framework of it. Um, but like yeah, like services like SmugMug or Pickfair, like those are great because they do combine the portfolio side with the e-commerce side um, and uh, you know just kind of unite them as one. And uh, you know at the end of the day, they they work really well uh, well for what they do too. So you know you can't go wrong with them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but you do have a good point there with the uh, hosting. Um, but I mean, ultimately, even things like Squarespace too, they're still hosted by Squarespace. I mean, you're not running the server yeah. off of your or the, the web page off your computer in most cases. Um, you just got to gauge it. Like sometimes it could be more unreliable if you run it off your own device because um, you're not experienced. You just got to make sure you find a, a good company that you know knows how to run things well. Yeah, definitely. You have to, like, I, I guess I'm leaving out a lot of information, but, like, if you did self-host, like, you have to have it all secure mm-hmm. um, against oh, yeah. threats or attacks or, you know, viruses. And if you're having stuff on there to sell, let's say, um, even if it's portfolio or not, but, like, you know, you got to make sure, you know, your customers trust your, like, credit card information being passed through. Because mm-hmm. so if you don't have, like, the HTTPS secure, you know, protocol, it's like, you know, why should they buy something on your website, especially if it's, you know, hundreds of dollars, let's say. So, I mean, like all that goes kind of goes into play, but, um, you know, basically like tie it back to the start. Like I, I actually used 500 pixels, um, before I had my smug mug website all set up and like that, like I said, mentioned earlier about the four by sixes I printed, like that website, uh, my, my 500 pixels website or portfolio had like those earliest images I took, um, just, you know, shooting, photographing things like around the house or the nearest park I would, you know, bike to and everything like, just stuff like that, but um, you know, they're, they're good places to start, and they definitely have like the discoverability features that get your work noticed, um, and you know, the usage of hashtags and all that stuff to uh, promote your stuff as well. So, I mean, you know, just do your research and find one you think you can stick with, or you know, just start several accounts and see which one you like the most. You know, from like a UI standpoint or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely would agree with that, and uh, you know, do yeah. your research and just find the best option for you or multiple options or whatever that takes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I, I, I think it is, I think it's also um, almost just as important to have a good social media presence somewhere. Um, probably Instagram or Facebook just in the modern day. And just because um, at least I know kind of the younger millennial generation, they tend to um, look up when they look up people, they'll look them up on social media uh, rather than their website. Uh, website is generally more for like business things, you know, more clients who are looking to buy prints or looking to, you know, shoot with you or something like that. And then, you know, social media is kind of for that new people you meet to kind of connect over time. Yeah, definitely. I, I've met people at um, like festivals or networking events or just, you know, where I'm interacting with other people. Um, and like some of them have emailed me the follow-up and some of them might be an older generation um sometimes they you know they'll message me on instagram instead but like i definitely feel like there's a trend of like people are more quick to ask for like your instagram versus you know your website even mm-hmm. though you have both of course so um, but yeah it's good to have more than one option i guess um for all different audiences or whoever your audience or market might be too yeah i definitely agree with that uh, mm-hmm. and like a good example is uh, you know promote yourself you do a lot of in-person events i'm sure you have business cards and everything with your all your portfolios you know your website and social media all of that Mm -hmm. 
yeah, that, I feel like that stuff definitely helps. Or I even have, um, I'll like hang on the wall in my booth or, you know, my galleries or whatever. Um, I'll just have like a printed out, it's really just printer paper, but like it has a QR code to like my social platforms, like my YouTube channel and like people, I've seen people do it in front of me. Like they'll just take out their phone, just like scan one or two of those and, uh, you know, start checking out my stuff, which is awesome. So like that's a nice quick way to kind of like almost like no excuse way of like, here, you want to like follow up with me and connect with me after the fact, like just, mm-hmm. you know, quit one tap and you know scan this, uh, this code and, uh, just follow my work and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you, you can get some of your biggest sales at in-person festivals may not even be from selling the prints itself would be from the connections you make in the future. And then they get connected to all your platforms through there. So. Yeah, definitely. Or or even at the very least, they just like to view my videos or, you know, look like my post, I guess, you know, that that's the mm-hmm. least I could say. But um, yeah. yeah, on the grand scheme, it's like, yeah, if they did, if there was ever was a big purchase or sale from it, that's awesome. But mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what are some of the factors you kind of look for when you're you're working on putting a portfolio together? That is a good question. So that that's really the main, I think, question to really ask with uh, this episode. Um, so I guess for me, it's it comes down to um, most of my like let's say portfolio work is online exclusively. I'll say um, I really I very rarely actually have, I don't think I've ever have printed out like a like a printed portfolio to hand to a client. Like it's always been um, you know I actually did it today earlier. I was just like hey. Um, a friend of a friend like had a they were like hey i heard you do you know so and so can you take like some pictures of my toddler and uh you know just like the little small family photos with the fall foliage and i was like oh cool commercial work you know that's the way i always want to do more of that to get a portfolio um, for this very reason and um i just sent over basically a link to my website to my i call it people but it's basically just port uh, portrait work or stuff i've done headshots um uh, engagement shoot you know stuff like that and uh you know, it's as simple as that, just sending up a link of uh, my previous work and going, hey, like, if you like what I do or want to see more of it, just check this out, view this, and see, you know, if I'm the right one for you or whatever. Um, so that's just one quick way to do it. But anyways, to really, uh, I guess, what factors, you know, go into it, uh, for me, it's first and foremost, I would say a subject matter. So it has to be something that's like a, a unifying theme or motif that ties it all together. So like in that example, it's it's portraits, so it's people. Um, you know, it's non like nature, like nature isn't the dominant subject, of course, in those photos. Um, but like, let's say it's, um, potential camera movement photos. Like I'll have uh, just a gallery set up for those, um, exclusively. Um, and then I've like different ones on my website for, uh, anything, including water, where that's like the predominant subject, which, um, mainly means like long exposures, of course. Um, I got different ones for birds and that breaks down to like, um, nowadays, as they accumulate more photos over the years, like accu- or that breaks it down to like songbirds, uh, shorebirds, you know, wading birds, um, just warblers, you know, anything like that. So you can get very, very specific, or you can loosely define, you know, what your portfolio is really based around. And um, you don't even have to go this, you know, exact as I do, but like you could merely have one gallery called wildlife and just have mammals, you know, like like deer or I don't know, whatever you may have, elk, coyote. Uh, birds, um, just anything, right? Oh, um, so, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just you, there's many different options, and that's the whole thing about this episode is the spark, like the inspiration. If you're kind of stuck or you want to get more into like, you know, organizing your catalog, we'll say. Um, but there's no right or wrong way really to do it. There might be a better way, let's say, or a worse way to do things. But like, there's no right or wrong way, which is nice. Mm-hmm. So all of this is just a grain of um, a grain of salt, really, and. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, subject is like the first real thing. Um, after that, it kind of just makes it, uh, compositions. Um, and that could be just anything like if I'm doing landscapes, I could do like wide angle. I could even do organize them by like time of day. So I could do like sunrise, midday, sunset, uh, something like that. Um, I could do it by just, yeah, like techniques I use like leading lines, S curves. Um, I don't know, just, yeah, focal lengths even, um, play a factor into that. Um, so if you want to break it down to like, I have a macro, uh, gallery on my website and that has literally just anything I've taken with my extension tube attached to my lens and camera. Um, and, uh, if you want to break it down even more, you could, you know, organize the photos 
that you've organized into like color. You can do like a color scheme and have it, you know, flow as it goes through each image. Mm -hmm. um, and just, yeah, and shapes even. I mean, you can do shapes of things if you want to get really precise. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like that matters more for like the printed portfolios, but online it still can make a difference. And mm -hmm. um, maybe people that view your work may like pick up on those like subtle details as mm -hmm. well. And if you're, yeah. if you're really into like birding or something, even you could go into species and even like subspecies, just get really in depth on it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean like, and like I said, it's, it, this is one of those like things that, you know, after you, you've done photo taking for years, it like just kind of flourishes and breaks out into more categories. Um, so like, I think when I very first started my website four years ago, my spud mug, I had like, I think I had just one called birds. And like I said, it just had all my bird photos in it. And then I started breaking it down to like songbirds and passerine birds. And then I had it like a, I think I had a separate category called raptors. And then that broke down to just owls and then vultures and then uh, like other non hawk, you know, owl raptors in another category. And then I had, I think waterfowl. And then that broke down to ducks. And then that broke down to diving and uh, dabbling ducks. So like, it, there's just so many options you have. And like you said, it was a great example because like, um, if you follow like the scientific names, you could just you base that off of um, what you kind of like list or name the the galleries, so to speak, um, as you know whatever they may be about. So um, that's a good way to do it too. Yeah. Yeah, it's just really kind of you could go many different directions with it and kind of pick what's right for you. Don't try to emulate other you know people because kind of you know of course look at other people's websites, but figure out what flows best in your mind. Yeah, definitely. It's it's part of it's like it depends on I guess the outcome of like the gallery. If you're just if like you're merely using it to sell, like it doesn't. Honestly, a lot of this I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but I don't think it matters as much. But like, um, if you're showing work to like a client, like um, actually I guess I could talk about it. Is uh more recently I had this um like an opportunity I'll say uh it was a, basically a lead I could follow from um in my like in person gallery uh, shops. Um, so one one this uh, one lady she emailed like our entire group of members about almost like twenty of us and she was like there's this local health center opening up um, early March 2022 or early spring basically uh, quarter one or quarter two and uh, they're opening up this new facility and they're looking to have us uh, get some artwork to put on the walls or whatever and they were you know looking around to like the Dayton area you know people and this is like not even just photographers but like anyone. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. They just like gave me an email address and I was like, let me just contact them and see what they say. And basically long story short, they're like, ended up getting a 30 by 40 canvas. Um, at least I'm in the process of making that get ordered and everything. And they're going to have it on their walls, which is awesome. But, wow. um, but basically the way that came about was, um, this lady, she, um, basically I curated this uh, portfolio of, um, some of my abstract intentional camera movement photos. Cause I felt like that would lend itself better to like like a medical facility or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just like, I think I threw together like 12 something photos um, or something like that. And I had them all arranged by color and detail and all that stuff. Uh, well, actually, since we're abstracts, it was mainly just color um, for the most part. And she was like, I like this. Uh, I like the last one, actually. It's like the most colorful one, which I kind of did on purpose because I wanted that last image to be like leave an impression and be very, very, you know, like, wow, you know, colorful. And uh, I guess it worked. I mean, she was like, I like that one the most. And I think we're going to follow through and get that one um, at this size and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, like like I said, it's in, that's that's like an opportunity that hasn't really happened before to me. But it's kind of coincidental that it happened recently uh, with doing this episode. Uh, but, like, yeah, making a portfolio and making it look nice, even if it's like an online gallery that you just share the link to your client or whoever. Like, it's it's important to make sure it looks, you know, very, very nice. Um and have like the full size original photographs so they can see every detail and everything too. Yeah, it's great. You got that lead through that and was able to provide a nice portfolio for them to kind of look through there. Um, I had a question mm -hmm. uh, with your portfolios, like on your website or uh, physically, like how many, well, actually, I guess this is more of an online question. Do you put every, like say if waterfowl, for example, do you put every in focus, fairly good waterfowl shot in or are you more selective like are you more broad on that or what's your what's your process there 
Oh, uh, yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, so, um, well, at least in my, like, what do I do with my website? Because uh, SmugMug, it sounds like I'm plugging them, but we're not sponsored. But I'm just talking about how nice they are. Um, they, and they have, like, unlimited storage and everything. Um, so I upload, like, a lot of, basically any uh, RAW file or image I edit, I upload to the site. But I keep a lot of them into, um, basically, an, uh, it's like, I think I call it like the old photos folder, but even if they're not like old photos, but it's basically all the rejects and uh, stuff that I'm just like, this isn't worthy of the portfolio, even though I thought like editing it would be nice. Um, so I do get kind of choosy about like which ones I do keep, like in the public's eye, we'll say. Um, so it is tough though, because I, I, I like, they're, they're kind of like favorite kids, you know, it's tough to choose. And like when I get three shots of like, like you said, a waterfowl, like a duck or something, and they're like kind of different enough that I can appreciate each one on its own. But like, I'm like, man, I don't think people need to see three mm -hmm. very subtly, like, like very similar uh, images of the same duck, the same light, same composition. And like, I don't think people like need to see three of them, but like, I'm just like torn. Cause I'm like, I don't know which one to choose out of the three. I feel like they're all three great and people need to see them. So, uh, it, it's tough and it's, um, I don't know. I find a way to make it work, but honestly, I probably share too much, and I need to be more choosy, like about which ones I display. You know, less is more, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that that's striking that balance is very very tough, and uh, maybe some people will be more cutthroat about it. Um, it just depends. But like for me, it's it is like a, a struggle, pretty much all the time of like which ones do I keep and which ones do I you know mm -hmm. not share, I guess too. So that really didn't answer your question, but um, no, I'll just say no, like I that's. Have... Yeah, it did. That was a good answer. Okay. <laughs> I didn't feel like I answered it because I was basically like, eh, I don't know what to say. Because like, mm -hmm. it is like a thing that's like tough, at least for me, to mm -hmm. you know, skirt around. You know, there's see, no easy way out. See, it's it's funny. I'm I'm like the complete opposite. I'm I'm more cutthroat um, in that regard. Like if you look <laughs> at my Lightroom catalog, like I'll, I'll delete 90% of the images um, and just, you know, oh, if, wow. if I'm taking like a, a series of a a bird or something i'll just um you know i'll keep maybe three of the raw files and end up exporting maybe two of those um so yeah i'm a lot more cutthroat with that i, I don't know why i guess it's just how i roll uh, but uh yeah i just i i just like smaller amounts i guess i don't want to have like millions of photos to go through um, when i'm trying to find something you know especially I mean if it's similar so yeah, that, that's a good way to go about it, though, because, like, you know, I, I, if I put myself into, like, the viewer's eyes, like, their shoes, and go, like, like if I'm looking at someone's website or, like, I don't know, their social profiles, I don't, like, necessarily want to see 20, th like, I guess now I'm thinking about it, nothing really, like, bugs me more, I guess, is, like, if I see someone post, uh, hey, I don't want to call anyone out, but, like, like if they post, like, the same, like, 10 plus photos, mm -hmm. In a, in a, yeah, I, you know, you probably know this kind of people, yeah. but like they post 10 photos of like the same bird or the same landscape, <laughs> but it's like a little bit different each time, but it's copy pasted basically. Uh -huh. And it's like, uh, nothing's more like. And in the same day, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's nothing against them, it's whatever they want to do, but still, like if we're talking from like a portfolio does a perspective. It's like, that's just nothing like whether they post on Instagram or like the website doesn't matter. It's just like, it does not look good in any way, in my opinion. But like, I think the mark of a true like professional will say is like, you have like just a, it's a diverse portfolio, but like it's 10 images. And, but man, those 10 images are on their own. Mm -hmm. Very impactful. Very, oh, yeah strong you know very strong and like you know they know their camera stuff well it's very strong color strong light pleasing like playful compositions and like but they all flow together like in such a way that it's just like it's stunning but each image speaks on its own like it doesn't need to be in this collection but they all work together and flow together nicely and like that to me like is the mark of someone that like really knows your stuff knows how to like, curate their work um, whether they have like an advisor or some help of a friend or someone they know, or if they just do it on their own, like that, that to me like speaks like, okay, you really know what you're about a lot better, I'd say. So, but mm -hmm. I feel, I feel like sequencing is just like the most important part, you know, of a portfolio. You know, you could have a bird in a landscape photo, but like, how do you make those two connect mm -hmm. is like the real most important part, I'd say, you know, to make a portfolio.
Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I, I think you can def you can have both. You, know, you can have a ten image portfolio kind of at the start of your website, and then as you go deeper, you know, you could go into more broad categories. Um, but I think having that quick portfolio is definitely important. Um, you know, whether that be on Instagram or whether that be on a website, so you know people can see what you're about. You know, they they may not just want to see a list of different categories and then have to search through that list to find the spectacular ones. I mean, most all the photos in your list, of course, would be very good, but they might have to dig through to find the really good ones. Uh, so it's it would be kind of nice to have kind of a, a nice landing page where you can see your the summary of your work, basically. Yeah, definitely. And it, it's tough, but, like, I do agree, like, early on, like, try and, like, almost like a challenge for yourself. Like, like just throw all your photos together in like a thumbnail kind of view and just like select, like I had actually had to do this. I remember, um, I'm thinking about, it, I'm going way back now, years ago, but, um, when I was taking the online classes at uh, New York Institute of Photography, um, uh, or NYIP, uh, I think one of the assignments was I had to, I think it was the last assignment, uh, for, I had two classes, but, uh, the last one I had to curate a f uh, portfolio actually of, um, I think it was like my five images or something, my five best images. And like it was basically making like a mock sharing thing with like the mentors on the like it was basically an assignment, and I'd like share like I think it's like five or ten photos and have like a statement about them and like what how they all connected and everything, and it taught me a lot because it was like I had to like really look back which you know back then it wasn't really much photos I had but so it was kind of easier but um, and my standards were different and all that but anyways. Um, like it taught me a lot about how to sequence images and like tell them all together as a story or just even if they didn't like like fit thematically we'll say like how to connect those from like a visual standpoint um so i had like you know like a photo of a bird one of uh, like a flower a landscape uh, a macro something or other like and it was just like trying to tie those all together and you know string them along like it was it was it was tough though like and it's it's a learning lesson but like i recommend people do that because I feel like it does help see helps you see patterns of compositions or things you do in your work. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it shows bad habits, you know, that you may want to break in your images that are kind of monotonous. Yeah. Like um, dust spots or, or like a slight mis yeah, focus. Oh, you can really kind of look into that. Yeah. I, I, I've realized over the years, like, uh, like I like jagged lines, like mm -hmm. stuff that's almost like anxiety producing, but like, because like nature's supposed to be calm, right? But like I have noticed, I have all these diagonals in my compositions, um, especially landscapes, and like I, I don't know why I, I drawn to that because it's almost like chaotic and like I said, juxtaposition, uh, juxtaposing with like you know this you know calmer scene around it. But for some reason, I'm just drawn to those, and um, you know it, it was from looking at my you know my photos as a whole, like is where I discovered things like that too. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's really important to just like look over your images and just see how they all look, especially as you go on over time or throughout the months or years, and um, seeing how they all change and with you know the time, I guess. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And you can really you know learn a lot about yourself there, and you can you can make changes if needed. Like you can, for a long time, I was all centered compositions like all centered and at least for wildlife like maybe not for landscapes but for wildlife and I, I just i knew i had to change it you know i had to get to that i follow the rule of thirds it's not like i adhere to it but now i find myself more lean towards that side of things um and i i like my photos a lot better so yeah it's funny i've had people ask me before um like what's wrong with centering the photo? Like, and it would be like a bird or something like you said. And I'm like, it's not that it's bad, but like, uh -huh. like if all your images look like everything's like, and I'm guilty of it. I'm totally guilty. Like in the past of doing that. But like, like if all your images have the subject, whatever it may be centered, it's like, it does like, if someone's flipping through a slideshow of 10 photos and they're all like subjects in the center, like they are going to see that. And it's not even like, interesting you know like it, no matter how good the photos may look it's like people are gonna see like wow i just all i do is like look in the center your eyes don't move around to any part of the scene <laughs> they look in the center and it's not it's it's almost like boring in a way yeah um, so but if you mix it up and you know switch up your things like you said with like rule of thirds 
Like you have a bird on the right side, and then you have one kind of like the foreground, and then one's way off in the distance on the left, and like you're you're playing up the composition, and you can still have a like a bird or something in the center, of course, like by all means. Um, like I do it a lot too, but like if that's the only thing you're going for, mm-hmm. is the center thing, like the center frame, it's not even going to be that interesting, you know. Mm-hmm. Especially when you look at it from like ten images of just that too. Yeah, and that can even be applied the other way too, with like following the rule of thirds too heavily as well. Yeah. Like when you're getting those <laughs> those close ups of a bird, you might want it centered, and you know you might be limiting yourself, um, for no reason, uh, and. I, an example of that, um, a couple of years ago, I think it was when I first got my uh, like my camera I have now, uh, I went to Michigan in the winter, and I, I shot exclusively 8x10. Don't ask me why. It didn't work for most of the subjects. It was, you know, I was shooting all landscape back then, and it just, I don't know why I did it. And I don't have the RAW files anymore, so I just have these 8x10 JPEGs. <laughs> otherwise good scenes but i'm like why did i do that it just does not fit here but i was limiting myself i guess back then that was my idea of trying to build a portfolio uh, but i think really you kind of have to do it kind of to build that overall portfolio you really have to do it naturally and not force yourself into a crop or a, a preset or something like that yeah maybe like you're probably like drawn to like a more consistent look is that why you probably shot eight by ten I I think it was – well, number one, it's because I was very into Instagram. I mean, I still am, but even more back then. And 8x10 is like the Instagram crop. Um, and also, like, I just thought that, you know, I maybe watched one YouTube video that said use 8x10 and I listened, you know. I didn't, didn't really have a lot of freedom of, like, expression back then. Like, I just kind of just kind of followed, like, you know, some of the online photographers. Um I don't even know who back then shot eight by ten, but it was someone I can't remember. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's not Thomas Eaton. It's not that was before his, <laughs> his before his eight by ten age. Uh, but I was, I was about uh, ready to say Teehee. Is that you? Uh, I don't even think I, I don't even think I knew about. I probably knew about him, but maybe it was Peter McKinnon or something. Who knows? <laughs> um, yeah. Who knows? But besides uh, the point. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, I was living myself for no reason, and. Uh, you know, just kind of expand out and shoot a bunch of things and then arrange the portfolios afterwards. Don't go looking for a portfolio, you know, just kind of let it happen naturally. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know we talked about presets uh, before in previous episodes and we, we both don't use them, but like, that's honestly, I will say, um, devil's advocate a little bit, but like that is one way to make your photos look more consistent, no matter mm-hmm. what subject or whatever they may be. Um, is using presets and that way it all achieves like the same, you know, color toning and all that stuff. But um, I honestly, I don't even think you need that. Like, honestly, like not to make it harder, but like I would say just, you know, try the challenge of just piecing photos together, you know, whether it's by color or mm-hmm. like I said, focal length or something, you know, and see how you can really make them all tie together mm-hmm. visually speaking. Yeah, because I mean, you'll have a good example. Example is temperature. I mean, you'll have, not everybody just shoots a white balance, which is exactly, you know, on the dot. You know, people will, some people's photos, I've noticed are just more cool in nature, which is perfectly fine or cool. Uh, <laughs> other people shoot more orange photos and that's, that's great too. Um, and, you know, I don't think people are, or most of these people are intending to do that. It's just kind of how they edit things and that's how they've been doing it and they'll stick with it. Or if they don't, they don't, you know, it's just kind of how your work evolves. Yeah, definitely. And, um, like I've even seen people, it's like they intentionally underexpose the photos and that's just mm-hmm. how they are. Um, for whatever reason, if it's like intentional or creatively, or they just don't even know it's in, like almost like an accident, but like, yeah, I totally agree where it's like some people, they might pump up saturation or yeah, like white balance. Like I like certain, at least for my editing, uh, like workflow, like I like certain images warmed up, um, mm-hmm. like certain waterfalls or landscapes. Um, but other things I might like, you know, cool down, but like, it just depends on what you really want to go for, I guess, with the outcome. Like if you're trying to display as a portfolio, that's one thing. Um, if you're trying to sell the photo, like you might up the saturation to make it more colorful. Uh, if you're going, you know, the social media crap, like it might just be, you know, the same way, like up the saturation. Like, I don't know. It just it depends on what you really want to get um, out of the image and what, you know, 
I guess what makes you most satisfied first and foremost. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's it's all a personal thing, and you know it's it'll come over time. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember. Um, have you are you aware of Sean Tucker? I know I've mentioned him before. Uh, I think so. Yeah, he's is he the portrait person? Um, yeah, he does a lot of portraits, um, lots of street photography. He kind of does like a little bit of everything, but um, he does lots of commercial work. Um, but he's he's pretty big on YouTube and everything. Uh, and uh, I like his work, uh, video and photo work. Um, but his videos are very like serious, like it's like a filmmaker kind of style video, and it's very he has like these sit down, almost like interviews with people, and they're like very professionally made. Um, and the guy's just very very like intelligent, and philosophical. Um, so his take on like photography and life is like very refreshing, but, um, anyways, I, I kind of like stole this idea from him cause he did this video like months ago. I, th- I think it was like months ago, um, about sequencing your work. And he was talking about how he makes his yearly photo books. Um, he does it once a year and how he creates those. And he actually mentioned this cool idea, which I'd recommend is like, um, if you have like photo paper or even just regular paper, like print out like little small images, like postcard size, like we said, like four by six or five by seven, or mm-hmm. even maybe smaller than that. And like, if you're like sequencing your photos for like a photo book or a portfolio or some whatever reason it may be, print those out and arrange them on a flat surface or like your floor or a big table and like, just like sit down with them and just stare at them and like start almost like a kid just start rearranging them like a puzzle. And just seeing how they all flow together, and that's, um, that's yeah, a really I, great idea. Wow. Yeah, it really stuck with me. Um, yeah. I really have not put into practice, honestly. Like, I should have done it for my photo book because I was going to, but I never got around to it. But like, like thinking about, it, I'm just like that. Honestly, makes a lot of sense because like we're so used to our screens, but like there's something different when because like you can drag your drop, you know, like your little thumbnail images on a computer screen, like you know I do on my website and stuff, but like. There's something different about that tactile thing of like I'm physically moving these my my photos really my work and like moving them around and like just staring at them kind of mulling it over and then you know getting up and going on a walk or doing something else and then coming back the next day or an hour from now and like looking at them again and going like oh I see I don't like this and then you start rearranging them again and um, yeah I just thought that was like a genius idea that he mentioned and and so maybe I'm just you know. I'm not stealing his idea, I don't think, but I'm just more so promoting it for other people. Like, um, maybe try out that. Like, if you ever need to sequence like a set of images or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you could pick ones that you think are just have no commonalities, and when you kind of lay them out like that, you could you could find them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, yeah, I mean, I'd recommend that. Yeah, um, it's a great idea. I feel, I, wow. Yeah. yeah, I know, isn't yeah. it? Like, it's it's such a good one. So, you know. I was just like, I felt like that. I felt the need to share it, even if it wasn't my own. That's because I'm just like, this is such a good idea. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I highly recommend. I mean, I, I recommend his work in general, his videos. But like that one in in particular, really does fit. Like, goes it goes together well with this episode. That's like a. I mean, I I, I don't know. His his work can't compare to ours. <laughs> <laughs> it's he does and he does some really good work. So I mean, uh-huh. so, yeah. oh yeah, I'll I just go check I, it I just out. looked at his Instagram. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, it, it's neat. And it's just neat how it's all consistent too. So mm-hmm. once again, I, th- I think that's a mark of someone that really, truly knows what they're doing, you know, and is crafted. They're honing their craft also. Yeah, and it's almost like you can tell just like the exposure is matched. You know, obviously settings are just very different, but like when it comes down to it, if you just look at it like a pro's grid, like it's all the same tone and the same amount of contrast, and they've just got it all dialed in. Yeah, everything just kind of fits together, even mm-hmm. if it's like subjects are all over the place, um, like thematically speaking. Like it's just you can just tell. Like there's a certain thing. Like I always thought it was interesting. It's like you look at like the the big greats, like Ansel or something, and like like even if someone never had seen like Ansel Adams, like as a person or other like lots of the photographs, his photographs, like and you show him a uh, picture of him. I mean, like excuse me, of a photo of his that is like. I don't know, like Yosemite peaks and stuff. People might be like, "Oh yeah, that's Ansel," and like it's like I always found that interesting because it's like how how can people like pick that apart and go like that's an Ansel photo, mm-hmm. you know, without really like knowing it or you know like that's an Ansel photo. Like I just find that always fascinating is like 
how consistent can someone be to get to that point where you go like, oh, that's a Henry Doyle photo. Yeah, it's just it's 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 fascinating to think about, you know, like what like what sets it apart from everyone else to make it like like almost like a trademark in a way, I'd say. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. Uh, I hope to get to a point one day where people can just look and oh, that's Henry. You know, um, <laughs> there's Henry. There he goes. <laughs> yep. Uh, fog. That's that's him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe the landscapes, but yeah. I think you have a few bird shots in the fog mm-hmm. too. So. <laughs> well, people like um, another one that sticks out to me that's kind of iconic is Elliot Porter. We talked about him a lot. Um, yes, yeah. He's got that. His white balance is just almost this. I can't even describe it, but you know, what I mean, it's kind of a coolish hazy. Yeah, like, it's like a, a cool haze. Cool haze. Yeah, yeah that's that's perfect to describe it. Uh, it's like a cool haze kind of thing. And it's it's just I can tell um, that it's his work. Um, and of course, he kind of he kind of focused on fall too, so it's kind of another way that kind of ties everything together. Um, we're still having a lot of variety within that season. Um, Clyde Butcher as well. Um, he yeah his portfolio um, he focuses on the Everglades. That's kind of his binding element um, as well as his as his iconic black and white, like high contrast landscapes. Uh, so, you know, just all these pros, they have these binding elements and, you know, they don't really intend to do them necessarily, but it, it really just happens. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some of them probably do go into it. Imagine though, like Clyde probably goes like, I want to be black and white only with my imagery. And that's what, like, but he excels at that. Cause he, he's uh he's like a specialist. Like he, he really sticks at that and makes it, the best like black and white photographs you can make, you know? Um, so, you know, that's, it's even one thing is like carving your niche or almost like pho- photographing only the Everglades or doing one season out of the year. Like that, that's really like, I personally couldn't handle that, but like, that's a very cool way of like approaching uh, this, this is, this is like entire art form, I guess, you know, it's just like focusing that specifically on something. Yeah, definitely. I, I would agree with that. Um, and it's just really kind of just cementing your legacy as a photographer and you know, kind of having a nice consistency with your work without it getting too repetitive. It's a nice balance. Yeah, for sure. It, all of this is a big like balancing game. And I feel like it's something you can't figure out overnight. Like you definitely have to be working at it. Mm-hmm. Like I said, over the years, in my opinion, it's just like really figuring out your style and what you like. Um, and it's, it's definitely not going to come to you like early on, you know, it's going to come with time and like your, your maturity, I guess, in the process and everything too. So, um, yeah, it's only, don't give up on, I guess. Yeah, that's, uh, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else about I portfolios? Guess, I mean, yeah, I don't know. We could probably end on the one question is like, uh, why and how do you think they matter in this day and age? I think, um, you know, portfolios really kind of just cement, like I said, like your legacy as a photographer. Um, you know, if you get high enough someday, you know, those, that portfolio might be a collection at a gallery. Or, you know, even if you don't, it could be a collection on your website that, you know, family and friends can look back on. And instead of having to search through just all these JPEGs, you know, they can, they can just see everything, uh, you know, put together how you intended it. So just really kind of a, a cool cool thing to do mm-hmm. what about you yeah I, I i would definitely agree with you there like it's it's black and white how no pun intended but it's like it's black and white or night and day i'll say it's like uh people that just like dump literally dump their photos like from their trip or something and like versus the people that take the time to not only edit each one uniquely but also um arrange them in such a way that you know it makes sense um so I kind of did something similar with my my Hawking Hills photos because um, my mom was curious and she's like she's like have you posted or have you put those on your website yet I've been I was I was waiting for them she's like really curious to see them and everything um, and so I like arranged them in this like unique gallery and sent it to her um, you know just with just those photos from that trip but I I arranged them in such a way where it made sense with like the waterfalls and the the caverns and caves um, cliff overhangs and um, the few like astro nighttime photos I took. Um, so it, it had some sense of like uniformity because it all was taken in the same region within like a three-day span but 
I also arranged it more um, more precisely, we'll say. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I feel like they just matter because it's like whether you're pursuing both like an artistic way, like you just want to share in a gallery or um, just for, like you said, family or friends, or even if you want to do it commercially and you're showing it to a client, like I just feel like the, the art of the portfolio is something that shouldn't go away. Um, and rather, I feel like it's it's evolved because of like with Instagram and the grid and everything. Um, I feel like it's almost it's it's evolved in such a way where like that's kind of like its own portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, but like at the same time, I say like don't neglect the idea of having a portfolio website or like a fully featured website um, where you can really control it. You know, much more you can fine tune it. We'll say more than like a social media platform can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I just feel like they're very essential. You know, I feel like it's a nice way to look at your work. And like you said, you could have, I couldn't have said better, but like, it is like your legacy in such a way. Um, so yeah, don't neglect it. Yeah. And I, I think that pretty much concludes the episode. Yeah. Well, could have done it better, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Was, yep, thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the video version on YouTube as well. You can subscribe down below, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.